in my mind, I feel like there are some things like if I were to murder someone, like that would be bad. That that was exactly that would be bad. But was that wrong? Can can you say that is a wrong thing to do? Is that is that man that you murdered? Was he attacking you? Like what were you doing in self defense? Were like I I I trust your ethics. Like I'm not saying that you would do it in a bad sense. I'm saying that you're was it wise. with Mitch. This show is brought to you in part by the Aggie Radio Podcast Network. On this show, we talk to people who are passionate about what they do and figure out what makes them tick. I have an awesome guest on today by the name of Max Allen. Max has been cutting my hair for the past couple months, so if I look good or look bad, it's, it's his fault. I'm <laughs> just kidding. Sorry. <laughs> but Max, welcome, man. Thank, thank you. Um, the reason I wanted to have Max on is because um, after talking with him, found out he's a practicing alchemist, which I find really unique. And um, Max, I've told you before, uh, one, of the re- one of the main reasons I wanted to have you on is because I believe everyone on earth is looking for happiness oh, and yeah. peace, right? And, you know, me, I'm, you know, a very devout member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and that's what works for me. That's yeah. what brings me peace and happiness. But I don't believe that there's only one way to do it. You know, yeah. that would be absurd to think yeah, exactly. that. And getting talking to you, I th- I've think what you uh, believe or practice is unique. And I don't think a lot of people know what alchemy is. I, I want to hear about your journey a little bit in getting into alchemy. Okay. Oh, that's a hard one. And I know it, it can <laughs> probably be a really long story. <laughs> but I'm curious because you, you've obviously grown up in... You grew up in Utah, right? Yeah, at LDS, actually. And your parent, your family are still active members yep. of the church, right? Yep. And you still have really good relationships. Very with good them. relationships. You've told yeah. me that several times. You, They're my life. <laughs> you, you moved back to Florida because of your family's having some health issues, right? Yep. yep. What, um, so what, what kind of caused you to go on that journey? You, you've mentioned before you got into philosophy in college and stuff like uh, that. Um, the journey of alchemy, oh man, where'd that even start? Probably s- curiosities where that started. Um, I so going to school. I was going to philosophy because I love philosophy. I love to think, and I want to know know more. Um, and I, I love ethics, so I, that's another thing I was adamant about was in philo- ethics of philosophy, so philosophical ethics, and um, it pushed me more into religious philosophy, and I want to know why everyone was trying following Jesus' philosophy. Like, in my eyes, Christianity is Jesus' Jesus's sort of philosophy. It's the way he thought, the way he thought, and the way he thought. So there's no other way to, to go around that. Um, it's people's perspective of how he thought. So I kept looking into that, and I would always try to find where he learned from, where he learned from, and there's Jesus' lost years. So when he turned 13 after he was in the temple, um, being upset at the marketers for being there, he disappeared until he was 30. Where did he go? What did he do? And so I, I've tried to find Jesus in those, those times. There's um, um, supposed artifacts of Jesus in India, supposed artifacts of Jesus in Egypt during those lost times, and even in China. And so I believe he made a loop of um, inner, looking for inner knowledge because he is the son of God. He's the one that knows everything. So he, he went looking for answers. And when he was in those places, the, the knowledge he found is the knowledge that I've come to believe. You sent me an article to read. Yeah. And you in that, it talked a little bit about Everything contains some sort of like overarching spirit or something like that. Yes. What What was that all about? And so, well, there. there I don't know. <laughs> so it's, it's inertia is the basic form of it, and there's no explanation for inertia. Like so science blame calls that one thing inertia. Like everything revolves around the Earth, revolves around the Sun because of inertia. Like there's no explanation for that. Like what What explains inertia? What explains gravity? Like there's no real explanations for those things. Sure. And 
to me, I call those things God. Like the, 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 that's the form of God that I, I look at. It's, it's the one thing that connects everything. Okay. So. That's interesting because inertia, it's been a while since I've had my science class, but is that where it's like an object that's not being moved, motion. won't move, or an object that stays in motion, stays in motion? Yep, an object motion will remain in motion until acted upon by an outside force. Right. So okay. Isaac Newton was a practicing alchemist. Right. And that's so, what I was reading up on a little bit. So. And then I know so it also talked a lot about how there's like different metals as well. Yeah. Or that's a big part of it. Yeah. And like the the four main elements, air, earth, water, fire. Mm -hmm. So what kind of part do those play in alchemy? Well, every, well everything is based off of the four main elements. Every, the water, air, earth, fire, like there's a game on your phone you can buy uh, or you can just it's a free game and you can combine those things and create other things and that is how everything's happened like the world c became itself by combining those elements to be create other elements to create new things to this element create that element to create this new thing like got a wheel and a and a board and put them together and oh there's a car like right so it just i don't know so it's the idea that like all four of those things combine to make everything. 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 Interesting. So. And it had a particular emphasis on metals, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Yes, very well, gold in particular, but uh -huh. metals, yes. Now I found that interesting. What what what's the big deal about gold? Gold, gold is the perfect form. The so you put like electricity into gold. The, um, 100% what you put into electricity and the gold will 100% will come out. Yeah. Copper, you put seven, you put in 100% and 30% comes out. And so uh, the other things are restricting what you're getting out of the element. But gold is the only thing that gives you what you give. Okay. And and that is the, if you watch Full Metal Alchemist, if you, that's the, the truest form of, of alchemy is what you put into something is what you'll get out of it. Okay. Interesting. So, and I'd imagine is that in the, I get I, it, you call it a religion, mm -hmm. right? Oh, it's a, yes, but it's more yeah. of a philosophy. Right, right. Yeah, because I'd imagine is a lot of that stuff kind of symbolic because I know with oh, gold, fair. like that's supposedly like the perfect form of element. Yes. Right, and every is it isn't there like an idea that every element is moving towards becoming like gold? Yes, and it's a so. Alchemy is based around secrecy. It, it's all this big old secret, and everyone's supposed to think that we're all greedy and we're all searching for gold and want riches and this stuff. But really, what we're trying to do is become a better person, better, and be be the light of the world. Like be be the what people want to see. Be the fire. Of the we are stars, and we all know that. And that's let your light shine. That's how we got to be. Interesting. You you said something about secrets. Mm -hmm. Well, what did you mean by that? Oh, it's so. Um, tarot is a big thing in alchemy and tarot astrology and all that kind of stuff. Like secrets, uh, occult and kind of kind of okay. things. So secrets meaning people who share this common belief. There's a lot of like so things that you don't know about that happen or, or yeah. And so, so tarot cards. A lot of tarot cards will have recipes on them. Okay. And so, so they'll tell you what elements to combine together. And some of those elements, if you combine them together, are toxic. And they're, they're, they're blatantly toxic to an alchemist. And so if you, you combine those elements, then you're not going to get gold. You're going to kill yourself. You're going to get sick. You're going to cause harm rather than create the gold. So there's secrecy in what they're doing. They're, they're, they're looking for the answer, but putting blocks in the way for other people. So it's like you're you're seeking kind of like perfection yourself, mm -hmm. self perfection. But you're you said you're, you're putting stumbling blocks for other people. Oh, I, I definitely it. don't. Or what other other people have like that. Oh, okay, okay. So, so, so like I like in the tarot cards, like um, uh, Oliver Crowley is a huge occult guy, and he he drew tarot cards, and I believe in his tarot cards. He wrote recipes and. There are blatant recipes that are not recipes. Right. So well, that's interesting. Okay. So I'd imagine, so like, like I was saying earlier, a lot of it's really symbolic. Mm -hmm. Very much um, so. In what you're pertaining to life. Because you said that 
you, you kind of touched on it. Every person's searching or looking to be seek something better for mm-hmm. themselves or to become something to better. Become that gold. Is that like having to? Is that gold different for different people? Oh, very much so. Or what? What? What's kind of the typical idea of perfection in this context? Perfection for me is different than perfection for you. But we're all, like you said, everyone's happiness is different. Every, everyone's perfection is different. We're all individuals that have had a, di- a di- different past, and so therefore our futures are going to be different as well, even though we're thrown this at the same things. Yeah. So we're going to take everything differently. Uh huh. So. Gotcha. That, yeah. So I'm curious then too. So if you're, if everyone's idea of perfection is different, you talked about you want to be a light to other people. Mm-hmm. Is that just you want to inspire other people to become their best selves, whatever exactly. that is, yeah. or what's the, how would you go about that? Um. So I, I coach the cross and the youth and the cross, and when I'm coaching the youth, I don't tell them anything they're doing is wrong because I don't believe anything that anyone does is wrong. That's a it's a Hindu belief, and that's I believe I've taken on myself. That nothing people do is wrong, but they go about it in their own way. They're their their own path, their own their own journey to find that happiness. So. Okay. Interesting. Tell me more about that. You said you don't believe anything people do is wrong, right? Mm-hmm. So, but there's obviously it's interesting for me to think about because in my mind, I feel like there are some things like if you I were to t- murder someone, like that would be bad. That that was exactly that would be bad. But was that wrong? Can, can you I say guess. that is a wrong thing to do? It could, it, is that is that man that you murdered? Was he attacking you? Like, what were you doing in self defense? Where, like, I I judge your ethics. Like, I'm not saying that you would do it in a bad sense. I'm saying that you're, uh, was it wise? That is that's the that's the Hindu belief. Was it wise or unwise? The action you make is that's 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 the basic basis around how they think. Okay, so it's not so much good or bad. Mm-hmm. It's wise and less wise. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of how you make judgments, exactly. I think. Because I feel like there are some, like, universal things, like don't murder someone, oh, yeah. right? Or exactly. But, but there's also a time where in the, the Book of Mormon, God told Nephi to go and kill the the king. king was it the king? Laban, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He told him to Get go kill the, the king. So therefore, ki- death was okay. Killing was okay. So there's not always... Oh, good and bad. It's always wise and unwise. The action was wise for for his people. Right. That's really interesting. So it's that that's it, that is true, especially in a, a, a religious context, because you know a lot of people who practice religion are very letter of the law. No, they're, they're you know, yeah. and you've probably seen that living in Utah, right? Very much so. <laughs> you there's know, black and there's white. Yeah, yeah. There's it's no like gray you, area. You don't do this on Sunday, or you you don't do these certain things. And I know a lot of people do that because they believe there's blessings attached. Yes. But there are certain cases. And therefore, it'd be wise. Exactly. If the blessings are attached, it would be wise. Exactly. Exactly. But I, I like what you said that it has to be context, mm-hmm. contextual, right? If the, it's almost like if the, the consequences of that thing are negative, like or far outweigh the the benefits that would be attached to following that yeah. law, it's like almost not even worth doing, right? There's a philosophical belief. I'm trying to think of what it's called, and I cannot right now. Um, where everything is black and white. Like if you, as we talked about this, but the way Kant thinks, like if if I say, if I say this is the truth, then it is all truth. Like if I can't lie, so I if I tell you I can't lie, then when there's people hiding in my attic and I need to keep them safe. I can't lie to the people that are here to ask me if they're here. So Right. I remember we did talk yeah, about that I can't last remember. time we cut my hair. We, you were talking about like in the, the times of like Nazis. Yeah. Right? If there was someone housing Jews yep. and the guy knocks on the door, Nazi police or whatever, yep. and says, are you hiding Jews? But you believe not to lie. Obviously, by saying that lie, you're going to be saving lives. Exactly. But if you are letter of the law and things are right or wrong, then you can't lie. You can't they, lie. And those people are doomed. Yeah. So did you do the right thing? Did you not do the right thing? Uh huh. That, that, that's an ethical question. So it almost sounds like the ideas of alchemy are very much like spirit of the law, in uh, a sense. I, I believe the the letters of alchemy are more looking for truths, capital T truths. 
Okay. So, so, so um, ast- astrology, um, basing things around facts and that things that have been shown and mm, alchemy came from the Egypt, which was so it, magic. It was it was magic before it was alchemy. Mm-hmm. Some magic became chemistry, and ke- chemistry became chemistry still. So, right. Yeah. Now, I, I want. I did want to ask you about the origin of that because you said it came from Egypt. Yes. So is this like, like, and and you mentioned magic. So, yeah, so you, ma- can yeah. you think of like some examples of what that was, or? So, the um, mummies. Papa, uh, when they wrap mummies and they. Like soaked them in. Well, I can't they soaked them in, but they soaked them in chemicals, and they, so they had they had knowledge of what they were doing. So yeah. so there had to be alchemists. There had to be people studying and knowing about these things. Gotcha. So Thoth is the the founder and the the father of alchemy, and he was Atlantean. He was a priest god of of Atlantis, of a priest king of Atlantis. Interesting. And so. Then he goes to Egypt and supposedly built the pyramids, and um, he, so he's been accredited to the building the pyramids. But Noah has also been accredited building of the pyramids. Noah meaning biblical Noah. Biblical okay. as of the ark. Yeah. Um, but Hermes is also Mercury, Hermes Trismegistus, meaning the thrice born. So and I can see him being Noah, Mercury, and Hermes, but proof of that is nowhere. That's just my own belief. Yeah, yeah. So, because alchemy has been around. I mean, obviously, you said since ancient Egypt. Yeah. Is there? I I didn't read up too much on this. When would you say like the origin of alchemy came about, time wise? Uh, all of all time. Of, of he, Thoth supposedly taught us how to write, taught us how to farm, how to cultivate, how to do anything and everything. So. It'd be of all time, of birth of anything, of everyone, yeah, anything known. So it's these kind of ideas of alchemy have been around since forever, is uh, what yeah, you're saying. Uh, as our, as life no, to us as known, yes. Okay. And this is alchemy in the sense of like valuing metals as like being more precious than others, mm-hmm. as well as just like the symbolics structure of moving towards becoming better hermetics is another another term so thoth wrote a book on hermetics which is the i think the i think the it gives the ten commandments of alchemy gives there's seven basic laws that 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 the universe follows and i I don't mean to put you on the spot but what are those i can i have my book with me so sure yeah yeah oh i have a thing here even put them in my notes because I'm terrible at remembering stuff. Right. So the principle of cor- correspondence, principle of vibration, principle of polarity, pr- principle of rhythm, principle of cause and effect, and principle of gender. How everything has gender, everything has a cause and effect, everything has re- rhythm, everything has polarity, everything has a vibration, everything corresponds, and the all is mental. The principle of mentalism. Interesting. So, so th- these are all principles that are found in basically everything in yeah, life. Yes, and h- how the writers of the book, because they don't even disclose their own names, um, how the writers of the book um, describe each and every one of those things is amazing. Like it is, they, they go into deep detail about how everything is based around these things and a combination of all these things. And Interesting. So it, it puts your it puts my mind in perspective, and I read that every night, every morning before I go. That's my Bible. That's what gotcha. I read. So, meaning like the like just those seven different lines, or it like breaks all of those down. So, so the introduction in that book is a, a basis of all those seven principles, and then each chapter after that it goes into deep detail about like a depth class, like four hundred depth class would here. Really? Yeah. So like it gives you a breath course and then a depth course of what it was. Interesting. So it's there's a lot to it. Oh, what you're telling me. Yeah, oh, definitely. <laughs> and I I've read the book probably over ten times and I still don't understand everything that's in that book. And I every bet. time I re- it's fantastic. Yeah. Every time I read it. 
Well, if you don't mind, I'd love to just talk about those individually because I okay. think those are interesting. Um, I, I don't know if we want to cover all of them or whatnot, but I'm interested what your thought was, the, the, the idea of polarity. Yes. Just because I know there's like that, – that stuck out for me just because things are really polarized politically right now. Like you hear that a lot. Um, what, what's the idea behind polarity and everything? Polarity causes motion. If you don't have motion, you don't have life. So you need, we need to have this polarity. Like, I know I know our government is crazy right now, and it's insane, and it's black and white, and it's very polar, but we need the polarity so we can see the effects. Like, it's said that the Republicans think of themselves first, and Democrats think of the world first, think of other people first, and that we need to think in the micro and the macro. And so we need both aspects, and every four years changing, every eight years changing, that's okay to me. And so I we like just... That. I, I know it's crazy, but we we need this insane insanity. Right. I I agree with that. The so it's the idea that for there to be almost peace in a sense, you gotta have both sides of the mm-hmm. coin. Right? Exactly. Or like um There's balance. Yeah. There's balance to polarity. You're right, right. Because it's it's almost like in a relationship, as well, successful ones oftentimes people have different strengths and when they come together they accomplish a lot more than they would individually exactly. not just because there's two people but because there's two set of different characteristics yeah. right star wars ren went and explored more to the dark side and went stronger into the the force because of it like uh-huh and so it, yeah it, it's balance that's all we're looking for is that balance of the world that that's so true that's so true and i guess that makes it clearly obvious that when one side of something seeks more power it doesn't leave room for the other one to thrive all right right so is so it, the, yeah so it's like so is it there an is there an idea that like extremes are kind of bad or no but as soon as you open a door to an extreme it opens the door to the, on the other side to the extreme it's okay. like it's like drugs you you, you want to want to do heroin cool the outcome of that is you're going to be down probably out for the next three days like you're not going to feel good you're going to die like there's there's extreme effects to it like there's uh-huh. a lot of things that you can do like there's positives there's negatives to all things right right that's interesting and then the other one that sounded interesting to me in there was about gender gender yep tell me about that there's, there's gender in everything there's there are, I don't know how to describe that. That's certain. I cut hair. I'm a barber. A straight, a, a curved line. That's considered feminine. A, an angled line is considered masculine. And so, so obviously, me putting those marks and the world putting those descriptions on those things has given it gender. Has given it a, a form. Interesting. So, because you said there's gender in all things, mm-hmm. right? And I mean, now, I mean, with uh, it, it seems like recently, it, it's probably been forever, right? But there are people identify as more than just two genders. Mm-hmm. Is gender different than just male and female? I, I would assume so. I, but that's not for me to decide. Like, everyone has their own outlook out sure. on that. But I, I'm just curious in the t- context of yeah. alchemy in this book you're reading. Mm-hmm. Like, what's, is, is it male and female that it's talking it, about? It, it or doesn't what, even what dis- is it? go into that at all. Okay. It, it, it leaves it open to interpretation. So is that similar to what you're saying then with uh, like polarizing? Like there's like an opposite in all things. Mm-hmm. Is it like really similar to that or? So when the the, the part of gender and gender when it goes more into detail, it's saying how every every person, every aspect of things has male and female aspect. Like me myself, I have male and female aspects to myself. Yes, like some things I do have feminine touches, some feminine looks. I think some things I do have masculine looks. Like. Oh, I'll just think so. I know. I, I don't know how to describe that. That's yeah, that is, yeah. I, like I can see how people would look at me, and oftentimes I've been thought as gay. Like I, I'm not as gay, but that's oftentimes people have thought I have. So to me, that's like oh, they 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 see my feminine more than they see my masculine. Uh huh. And so it's, that's just standing out to me. And so I, right. I, I don't know how to describe that. That's well, in a sense, that kind of makes sense to me because. We are made up of both male and female, X, right? Y to, chromosomes to so. procreate. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So it would make sense that you know you share 
similar characteristics. Yep. Like even if you are biologically male, y- you obviously still share similar things as a female would, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, that's really interesting. And then what what were the other ones on your list? Oh, a lot of other ones. So we did pol- polarity and gender. Mentalism is my favorite. So the all is Let's mental. So perception. And that, that's been proven that perception is how you perceive things is how you will react to them. Your, your emotion involved in the, into something will give you a better or worse outcome. Okay. So if you have... I'm trying to think of it. I had an example and it left me. Um, if, if you get hit, like, so many of these things will play into effect, cause and effect. Ow, it hurts. Yeah, but your reaction could be, it's all mental now. So the, the hit could be, okay, wow, a confusion. Or you can just go into anger. And so, so your emotion, the only thing that we can control is mental. Interesting. Okay, so that's uh, so it's almost like your mentality, regardless of what happens to you mm-hmm. physically, can actually have a major impact well, exactly. on what happens to you physically. Yep. Is that it? Yeah. Okay. Because like attracts like, vibrations attract vibrations. So if, if you're looking at the world in a bad way, you're going to see it in a bad way. Sure. You're going you're gonna to re- reciprocate the negative effects of the world. So it's kind of like a mind over matter type idea. Uh, very much so. The other thing that came to my mind, because I, I was talking to a girl a while ago. I think I told you this. Mm-hmm. She's a um, concert pianist, mm-hmm. here, or no, celloist here at USU. And she talked about how there's a – I, I asked her what she thinks about when she's performing a 30-minute memorized piece, right? Because I, I, I don't play any instruments, and so I was like, okay well, – what does this girl think about? Because I have zero experience being in the zone in that yeah. sense. And and she talked about how she f- focuses on the emotion she wants to portray to the audience yep. and make them feel. Music itself is alchemy. It, it's circle of fists. It thought the whole. The, the, there there are many explanations behind why music is alchemy, but it's a great time. It, it, it's it's. It gives motion. It's it's vibration. It it's it's all vibration. It's frequency. It cause and effect. It's so her her wanting to portray those emotions and having the tools to put into the piano and to put her emotion into the piano is putting the vibrations of her own into the piano, which are releasing to for everyone else to feel. So she's pushing her own emotion to onto everyone. And literally. So, literally. Interesting. Because it's not just you're you're sending just like sounds that trigger emotion. Yes. It's almost like you're literally sending. So you're emotion. sending emotion because they're sending vibrations. So you, we all know music, angry music. We have all have angry music. We all have happy music. We all have love music. There's music for everything. But her playing the piano, she's putting her emotion and she is pushing her own, her emotion onto everyone else. Right. Because she, she has the tools. She has the knowledge. Uh huh. And that does make a lot of sense to me because, like you said, people listen to music almost because they're either trying to feel a certain way yeah. or because they're feeling a certain way and I they want to dive deeper into that. Want to feel some, or want to feel something else. Yeah, like, true. Yeah, completely. True. So, Is that similar? Could you apply that to, like, movies as well? Oh, exactly, because everything, everything, Nikola Tesla said, everything, when the world looks... When science looks more at things the unseen, frequency, form, and vibrations, it will go far into, like, exceed leaps and bounds in the, into technology in the future. So everything is vibrations. So movies, color, all those things that, that had play an effect. I was walking outside. I'm the only guy in an orange jacket. Everyone else is wearing black or green. Yeah, and I love true. color. I love, I love color. I love the way it makes me feel. And everybody else is playing the color of the the clouds of the season. I'm not going to let the season control how I feel. I'm going to control myself, and I'm going to use the colors to play a band of that. That's interesting. So it's almost like you, you're you not even dressing because of 
how you look. It's almost how you want to feel. Yes. And that affects it. Oh, definitely. And that's be and that's because it affects the way you're thinking. Just 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 like when I, when I talk and I have a smile on my face, my voice sounds so much different than when when I have a frown on my face. Uh-huh. People know. I called a store yesterday to order some food. Can answer the phone. I knew he was not smiling. Like I was like, dude, just smile. I just wanted him to smile, just like so just gonna hear the, the the tone of his voice change, but. The kid didn't smile. And when I, when I showed up and I talked to him in person, he sounded 100% different because I was eye contact and I was smiling at him. I wasn't wearing a mask like I was supposed to, but I was smiling at him. So he yeah. so he reciprocated the feeling. So it's almost like there's a literal sense of like sending bad vibes or yep. sending a good vi- vibes. or my friends, all, all, Feeling a vibe. A lot of my friends make fun of me because I, cause I'm huge into vibrations, vibes. Dude, this is a bad, bad vibe. I don't like where I'm at, but it's a bad vibe, bad vibe here. And they all... They all tell me, dude, vibes, the vibes. Oh, yeah, it's a bad vibe. And so, <laughs> they may even make fun of me, but I, I believe in that. It, some some places call it the Holy Ghost. Some places call it something else. It's, But it's a, a feeling you get when you go somewhere and you you know it's not right. Sure. Those, those vibrations, those feelings, they're talking to you. Yeah, I mean, even through the lens of my own beliefs, like through, you know, LDS, like I would almost think that, like, you know, God has to follow the – laws of chemistry of nature of nature yeah, exactly right and like if you know m- maybe that's how that works through the holy ghost I, right that, that, that's been my mindset it's a that. vibe right he's sending feelings he's causing you to feel a certain way or a feeling makes you think a certain way mm-hmm. so that you don't do something or whatever exactly so that that, that makes a lot of sense there and then certain so i'm huge into crystals and weird stuff like that but then certain crystals will make make those so your pineal gland will help make make those things knowing to you like like feel those things more uh-huh. so that, that when you decalcify your pineal gland then you're making it so you can feel the vibrations m- more if that makes any sense so and i this is going to sound you know this is just dumb mitch here but well, what your pineal gr- gland pineal, what, what does that do your, your pineal gland is it's a gland in your head that um i can't remember what's around it Mm-hmm. It helps you feel. It helps you. It helps your judgment. Helps you understand. Um, monkey brain is what it's, it's called often. Your your natural reaction to things. Your okay. Um, who you innately are. That, that, that that's probably uh, that's the best way I can explain it because that's how I look at it. So like if you were to remove logical thinking, mm-hmm. it's like your natural behavior yep. based off of your surroundings. Mm-hmm based off of anything so so surroundings off of experience off of anything and everything gotcha so. okay and i found it what you, that interesting you said about crystals because i've heard about that i mean you hear about maybe I've, maybe that i've just seen too many movies but like mm-hmm. you you hear about nba players who will like touch crystals before their games or, or athletes right um just so that they they're in the right mindset, uh, right? It changes your vibration. Every crystal has a certain vibration that it puts off. Okay. A- and gold puts off a perfect vibration, a cured vibration. This pendant I'm wearing is supposed to protect me from the, the negative effects of 5G um, of, because of the vibra- because the, the frequency that 5G puts off is the same that microwaves put off. Okay. So uh, we're, we're literally microwaving our Earth right now by using our cell phones interesting because that okay that makes sense because I, I wondered that too because I, I haven't really looked into the 5g thing but i've heard you know just with corona and everything that yeah. was really big right but i could corona, see the concern corona, corona showed up as soon as 5g showed up like it, that's that's what scares me the most right but that makes sense to me now just because you're you talk so much about vibrations mm-hmm. that yeah those are certain types of vibrations that can I mean, if we if we believe that vibrations affect people, like music, movies, you know, being examples, it only makes sense that on some scale those vibrations would have an effect on you. Yeah. So that we that go back to the, going back to the pineal gland, the, the it affects how empathetic, more empathetic you are. The more calcified it is, the less empathetic you will be. So, so um, vibrations and pineal gland go hand in hand. I am extremely affected by color. Like I said, I wear orange and because I like to feel happy because I, I, the bright colors affect me. Um, and seeing all the gray around it makes me kind of sad. Um, so um, 
I don't know where I was going with that. I... <laughs> no, I, I like what you're saying, though, about just you, you want to create good vibes. Yeah, exactly. Essentially, yep. But with all that you do. Well, I, I, I want everyone else to feel them, too. I Hit, like that. Hitler put fluoride in the water to to block the Jews' mind, like their their thought process and how they felt toward each other. Uh huh. And fluoride calcifies the penal gland. Interesting. So. Huh. I I I I like that a lot though because when we first started talking, you you said that you want to help others along their journey to obtain their perfect self. Exactly. Right. Yep. And it sounds like you do that by basically providing good vibrations. I try, t- I try to. Right. <laughs> Whether that comes physically, you know, like you talked a lot about appearance, colors, right? But it's also what you're putting out, what you're talking about, saying. Let your light so shine before men, they may see. Yeah. And glorify your God and see. Or I can't remember that one. Your God and glorify him in heaven. Yeah. I remember yeah. that ended, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know what you're saying. You know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I take, I take things literally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I like that a lot. And I, we can continue with those, but I, I'm also curious, in the context of alchemy, do you believe that there's some kind of creator or, like, supreme being? Or is it kind of everything's just laws of physics? Uh, um, so that, that that's a very, very hard question for me because I go back and forth because I, because I, the laws... There's so many laws, and they 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 follow hand 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 and do it so well. It, it seems like there has to be a master and has to be someone creating it. But my my Hindu beliefs are so my idea has been Christian and Christianity and Hinduism. The difference is Christianity has a construct, has a builder. Hinduism, it's a play. Everything you're here together, you're here to learn together. We're all God experiencing life as different individuals. We're all the same being, and that is the way I, th- I believe. As we're, all, we're all the same being, experiencing different things in different ways. Interesting. So you say that we're all gods in the sense of, like, collectively? We are God. No, we are God. We are one God. Meaning, like? You and I are the same God. Okay. And the, that spirit, and we're, we're, we're here learning and collectively gaining, gaining knowledge together. Huh. This earth is our mother and teaching us. Gotcha. So it's, I, I'm still trying to understand it a little bit. So it's, it, it's not like collectively we're God, but it's just like everything is? Everything is God. Everything on this, everything with form has consciousness. And everything with consciousness is God. So it's not so much you believe that everything was created by a god, but rather everything collectively is almost like supernatural in a sense. Is that God? At, like oh, almost everything is supreme. Or I'm trying to find the right words, man. Like the everything is uh, I don't know. Like a higher power, I guess. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Definitely a higher power. Because to, to have form itself, it's just choosing to be in that form, and therefore it is is the higher power. Uh-huh. And so for, 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 this, for my phone to be a phone, it's, for this table to be a table, it, it's choosing to be that. It's not letting the, the atoms fly out. It's choosing to keep it intact. That inertia is keeping it intact because that, that, that inertia is God. Because making it stay with it. Okay, interesting. So it's almost like... The polarity. Yeah. Well, because there's... The idea of, like, matter, like, I mean, you could take the most basic thing, like a like a piece of, I, I guess, metals, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Like, they're very complex compounds, right? But somehow they were formed and put together, right? Exactly. I, I, I remember I found that interesting in the article because it said that, correct me if I'm wrong, that metals are, like... Did it say they're living? Oh, every because everything in the form is living. Okay, explain that to me. Um, the guy, the consciousness to to keep form it to intact it has to keep it here, has to keep it around. The inertia has to, something has to say, hey, you're staying with me. 
not go away. So inertia, it, the, the idea that it's staying there is is the god, the form, the, the idea. So it's the fact that that thing, because this is a, a different almost definition of what life is, right? Oh, yes. Because I feel like definitely in, in science, like most people in like a science community or sense or or people would think that if something is dormant like this table, yeah, this table is dormant. We, we all watch Pocahontas. Living. Every life, tree, and creature has a life spirit as a name. Uh huh. So even as a child, Disney's telling us these things. Are 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 throwing hermetics at us because I, I Disney was from was huge into the occult. Like uh-huh. he 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 understood the these things, and so he put these things into his movies. And right. Then secretly a t- taught children using this knowledge. Interesting. So secret, secrets are, are out. Right, right. So that, this makes me really interested because I feel like if you have that belief, obviously we care about, I feel like most people care about the way they treat people mm-hmm. or especially living things, right? Oh, when people have a pet, you know, they baby that thing. Tip, I mean, hopefully, right? Exactly. But I feel like most people love their pets. They love the people they're around or... They feel like it's a good thing to treat, you know, obviously moving, breathing things well. But does it uh, does does it affect like how how good? you treat yeah, just what, what most people good? would call dormant objects. Yeah. Does it affect like do you treat your shoes with respect? Exactly. You, you know you, what I mean? You, you need to. Uh-huh. You, you could, they'll last longer. They'll give them life, they'll give them more life. Like so then and that and giving them the life not respect is giving them thanks and they will, they'll give you the thanks back if I'm giving you a longer life with those shoes. Like, I've had shoes for probably 10, 15 years. Sometimes because during high school, I've worn these shoes. I'm still wearing these shoes. The ones you're currently wearing? No, not, no, not these ones. Oh, okay, no, okay. No. <laughs> but you have shoes yes, that you've worn in high school. Yep. So, so, and my basketball shoes I've had for just as long. Luckily, my feet haven't grown, so... Um, to have these shoes for that long so yeah so that that also makes me think too because i think it was newton's law that says like any forget the exact wording but it's like everything that has a reaction has an equal Mm -hmm. and opposite reaction exactly to that thing Uh, yeah like the law of polarity he's just giving you a different definition of it okay so that makes a lot of sense because if like like you said in the example if, if you treat your shoes well they're going to treat you well by providing comfort for longer. Exactly. Interesting. So the, what, what, the, the energy you put into things, there's the same energy that you'll get out of it. Uh-huh. Base, base, first and basic law of, of the alchemy right there. Law, law of equivalent exchange, as the Full Metal Alchemist silly kids show calls it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, no, I, I mm. like that, though. So with uh, other – this makes me curious, though, too – is it with, with all inanimate objects like that, mm-hmm. obviously in the context of alchemy, we believe everything is living. Are there things that you choose to treat better than others? Or well, is it things that are only particularly affecting your life that you treat better? Well, I, I try to treat everything with respect with, with that because I know it's alive. I, I know it's living. I know that it it wants to give as much as it can. It wants to... And then... By me treating it through respect, I can give it a better life for itself. Interesting. So, I like like the, you you love a flower, you, you help it grow. You, you like a flower, you pick it. And so, I, I want to help everything grow. I want to help everything be the best it can be. Interesting. So it's not just helping human beings it's become their best. Everything. It's everything you interact with. We see thirty percent of light, therefore. 70% of what's around us, we don't even see. Uh huh. Those vibrations can be beings. Those vibrations can be other spirits from other worlds. We have no idea. So if we treat everything with respect, we're doing the best we can be. Tell me about this karma thing, because I feel like that's a pretty well-known idea. Oh, yeah. Of that, like, you kind of get what's coming to you or what goes around comes around. Is that because you're... It's like if you have bad vibes, you're also attracting other bad vibes. Yeah, well, like I keep saying, like attracts like. Is that we keep we always opposite attract, opposite attract. No, that's not true at all. Like attracts like. Like, yeah, we have, we have the polarities. Like they'll attract each other. But 
if I'm smiling and happy, I'm gonna attract people who are smiling and happy. Those vibes are gonna attract those good vibes, not the negative people who are are searching those good vibes because they want to be happy. I'm sure they'll, they'll be tagging around, but they're not gonna be as happy. So like attracts like, like, so the the bright lights are looking for those bright, bright lights. So karma is a thing because you create negative effects on people. You're gonna carry those negative effects with you, and they're gonna you're still gonna look at the world in that way, and so they're gonna draw that in. Interesting. So it's in the literal, most literal sense, it's like misery loves company. Mm-hmm, exactly. Kind the, of the secret. The secret goes over this. The book, The Secret. Okay. So if you, if you, anyone's read her, looked into that. <laughs> yeah. What? What's? What's the secret? It's, so it's, it's 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 basically that same concept. Um, if you want good things to happen, you focus on those good things. You just you stay actively engaged in those things. Yes, blessings happen, but no God is going to say, hey, here's a million dollars just for standing there holding a toothpick. Like, okay, here's a million dollars, but you put yourself to action. You went and did work. You did these things. So yeah. you, you deserve these million dollars. Not that, oh, here you go. D- deserving is a hard word for people because they don't just deserve things innately. Nothing, nothing is innately deserved just yeah. because you're a human. Yes, I believe people probably should eat and breathe and be alive, but you don't deserve to do that just because you're here. You so p- put, put yourself to work. Right. Some, some, something needs to happen. You need to me- cause action for those things to happen. So it's like everything we do in life is like, it's like almost like the the things you get in life are because of merit mm-hmm. in a sense. Exactly. Law of, like law of equivalent exchange. Yeah. I mean, I, I believe that even just in the context of my religion, just because we believe that, you know, every, like in the sense, like in, in the church, there's commandments, right? Mm-hmm. And we believe that, you know, every law has a blessing that is predicated by obedience to that commandment. Oh, exactly. Right. It's like you only get the blessing after you, act like as a principle of like action and power mm-hmm. right you have to act in order to get the blessing exactly but it's it's almost like in a literal sense that you're getting what you what you deserve in a sense exactly yeah or what you've earned what you've earned yeah and then that's, that's probably the best way to describe that my little sister hates hearing deserve 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 because people innately think they deserve things but earning things is okay for her to hear because People do earn things. Right, you right. Put, you put action at bay, so you uh-huh. earn this thing. No, I have a coworker. We've debated about <laughs> that before because he's told me he's been adamant. He's like, you don't deserve anything, yeah, man. Yep. Yeah, like you hear that. Yep. Like, it's like in the wrong context. And like we say deserve in like a probably a, a an different, incorrect a different way. way. Yeah, yeah, but it's like in the literal sense of deserving something, you don't deserve anything. Yeah. But I like what you're saying that it's like in the principle of karma, it's like – <laughs> in the literal sense, it's like you kind of get what you deserve yep, yep. a little bit. Exactly. So what about people who feel like they've been treated unfairly by life, right? Like maybe they've been doing things that they believe have a, should have a certain outcome. So that's not the outcome they get. They're holding their, vib- their vib- vibration at a certain level, and so they're attracting things on that vibration. Each vibration has different effects. Like four, 438 is supposedly... The, the love the love frequency um and love frequency yeah i, I can't, can't remember if that's really what it is but it, it's 438 432 like somewhere around there like it's um but it's it creates a, a good feeling and everyone's happy at that frequency but if you're creating a different different frequency and attracting different vibrations you could be attracting angry people or upset people or s- sour people like you are so if you're going to be sour you'll probably attract sour people so if you're True. happy, you're going to attract happy people. And it's no I, – I don't think it's a foreign thought either that people who want to be happy, they don't want to be around people who aren't happy. Yep. You know, Or if people are unhappy, they want to be around people who are putting off happy vibes, exactly. right? They, they, because that's, that's the only way to get it is by getting it from something, yep. right? A lot of times you'll see people – parts who are unhappy in the corner and there will be people around them trying to make them happy – but that's what that person in the corner wants. Yeah. They want that attention. They, 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 they just know how to convert 
their vibration to a different vibration so so they can be attracting that at all times i like that a lot interesting well for the last couple minutes we got we probably got five to ten more minutes i, I want to hear and you've told me this before that for almost your whole life you've always been kind of searching and looking mm -hmm. for truth mm -hmm. right and I, I can see like a lot of the things you've talked about like make a lot of sense and i can see how that could bring a lot of peace and or even just kind of some guidelines for for peace and in, in life for sure oh, definitely definitely that, that's what i that's how i have to, to look for that's why i look for the answers because i look for that peace i think that's why everyone looks for those answers because they're all searching for peace we all have that, where do we come from? Where, why are we here? Where are we going? We've all had those questions. We, sure. Basic Mormon, no, they ask questions that get asked and they knock on the door. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so yeah. we, we all want those questions. And yeah, we all want to know the answers. And so I feel like I just look and search deeply for those answers. And I want, I want to know those answers. Sure, sure. Well, la last question I want to ask is, um, you've talked about searching towards perfection. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we know that as human beings, we die. What, I guess, through your lens, do you believe happens after we die? Like, is there some kind of afterlife or what? Uh, that's, that's a hard question because science pr has proven that energy does not cease to exist. True. So, and what are, and your body loses weight when you die. There has been proven that people have been weighed and as they're dying, have lost weight. I've heard that, yeah. And so I've therefore, it's an auction, I don't know. Like, I, I think that they're losing something and that energy is going somewhere else. And I will, like I said before, the, we see 30% of light. So if our, something's leaving this form, it's going to another form. Cool. It's going to a different dimension, it's going to something else. It says to, we don't, we don't, we don't die, but we die. Yeah. We don't cease to exist. Cool. I like that a lot. And then I, I'm also just curious as well, because you, you obviously, you know, practice and believe these mm -hmm. things. And you said you read that book all the time. Do you meet with other people who also believe these things? Or is this kind of a personal so I've philosophy I've that you follow? I've dabbled in meeting other people through the occult. Like uh, some people have, but they're too secretive for me. Because when I, when I expose the knowledge that I have about things, they always get upset. So they're not going to be happy about you being on here today. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't care. <laughs> they can okay. just say whatever they want. I don't want to get you in trouble, <laughs> man. Totally. Uh, yeah, but it's, uh, the spreading of knowledge is what you sh we all should be doing. It, and and yeah. our own knowledge is our own knowledge. And how people take it that is their own because they all is mental. I agree. Yeah, and I feel like for someone to have their own beliefs, it should never be just because they're taking someone's word for it. Yep. It should be because of like, like you, you've done, you've searched, you've read, you've you know done things, and you've found what makes sense to you based Question off everything. of everything. Polarity, right? <laughs> exactly. Finding the opposites and you know what uh, what works best, and I think that's really cool, man. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I guess just in closing, um, is there anything you'd like to share or you know places people can go to read more about this? Uh, oh, I don't even know. There's so many, so many places, and I suggest reading a lot of places. So, search on the internet. Yes, I know that's silly to say. Read Wikipedia's definition. That's one definition. There's many other definitions out there. There's truth in everything. There's lies in everything. Everything is half true. Everything is half false. We need to realize that and what we do in life. Hundred percent. So. Well, Max, thank you so much for coming on, man. Uh, I've, I've honestly really enjoyed thank having you on, man. Thank you, Mitch. You're awesome. I'll uh, see you in the next barber shop. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for those of you in the Logan area, hit oh. up Max Allen at the Boneyard Barber. Boneyard. Room. Yes, please. Uh, I'd love that. Talking about good vibes. That place is oh. good vibes, oh. and Max cuts That's freaking good man. hair. Thank you, man. At least I like my hair cut. <laughs> I don't know. I think you do a good job, man. Thank you, sir. Okay. See you later, everyone. See ya. <laughs> Dude, awesome job, man. That was sweet. That was awesome. Totally. If you ever want to come on again, dude, let oh, me know. Of course. You let me know. <laughs> I had a good time. I love conversations. I didn't, I didn't even fun. get into half yeah. the stuff I wrote down. That's the only thing. Oh, dude. Astrology, numerology, mathematics, geo. Yeah.
geology, geometry, yeah. chemistry, vibrations, frequency, vortex math, pyramids. <laughs>